<clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. This is Hunter here, and I'm here with Scott and Cop. Oh, yeah, actually, they're not here, so you've got just me today. This is Hunter here, and thank you guys. Thank you so much for continuing to listen to us. We love doing these for you, and today we're going to do a spoiler-free review of X-Men Apocalypse. We'll wait until the guys get back to do our spoiler-filled review. Um, so... Since we're doing just a spoiler-free, there's not a whole lot to talk about, so I'm going to make this as brief and as vague as possible, but there will need to be some mild spoilers to kind of go ahead and give you my opinion. So, uh, the movie basically picks up, uh, I believe it's 10 years, uh, yeah, it's 10 years after the events of Days of Future Past. So, uh, Xavier, Charles Xavier, played by the brilliant James McAvoy. He has the school up and running, so you actually see kids interacting, which is actually kind of cool. Um, so he's running the school, things are going well, and then go figure uh, Magneto, uh, pla uh, played by uh, Michael Fassbender, he pops back on the scene through an event that I will not spoil. Um, so basically, Raven, played by Jennifer uh, Lawrence Mystique, she pops back up trying to find Eric. That leads them crossing the paths with Apocalypse who begins his uh, recruitment to go ahead and destroy the world, sorry, cleanse the world and rebuild it anew. That, that's the shorthand version of the plot. So uh, looking at Rotten Tomatoes right now, this is at a 48%, which is the lowest uh, score for an X-Men film on Rotten Tomatoes since the classic uh, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Which is what makes my review so confusing, because I went into this, and I saw this opening night on Thursday, um, with a pretty packed theater, like at 10.50 at night, and I was sitting there really expecting a shit show. I was just expecting this to be absolutely atrocious, and that there would be nothing that I liked. In the first half hour, it, it really kind of hits you hard out the gate, uh, especially with Magneto and what he's been up to. And so I was watching the movie the whole time, waiting for that ever shoe to drop, and yet it never dropped. Uh, this is a very well done film. Um, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it really is quite uh, incredible and quite an achievement. And you could make a case it's the best X Men movie they've done since uh, uh, since uh, Days of Future. Well, obviously since Days of Future Past, but you could make a good case for it being the top three best X Men films they've ever done. Uh, so this is directed, of course, by uh, Brian Singer, uh, who, you know, of course, Mutual Suspects, uh, X-Men First Class, and X, uh, X2, and Days of Future Past, uh, the good X-Men movies, basically. And he has an inc he does an incredible thing here with a lot of the actors. So Oscar Isaac, uh, who plays Apocalypse, I've heard people say that he's too small to play Apocalypse, he should be bigger, should be taller, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You could make that argument, I guess, but... Honestly, because it's Oscar Isaac and he's such an incredible uh, thespian, uh, I thought he did a hell of a job with this material and really made the uh, character Apocalypse, who's not super interesting in the comics even, made him feel menacing. He made him feel dark. He made him feel uh, gritty at times. Uh, the only thing I would say that did take away for Apocalypse for me as far as... Uh, Apocalypse himself, they were doing that weird T-Pain auto-tune <laughs> with it, and it was just a little distracting at points. Um, it, it's very much uh, it's very much like in Dark Knight with uh, Batman's voice. It bugs you for a little bit, but you just kind of accept it after a while. The points where it happens, it happens the first couple times, you're like, eh, but once it happens, you kind of get over it. But uh, Oscar Isaac was incredible in this. The MVP of this movie, though, it's tied between Fassbender and McAvoy. Their back and forth, their conflict, and how their conflict is a lot more central to the film than you think. Um, again, without getting to in the spoiler territory, James McAvoy and Fassbender both give their best performances uh, as their respective characters because Charles Xavier, this is him at his kindest. This is him at his most... Uh, not vulnerable, but at his most caring, and seeing him interact with his students, because they are his students now, especially Jean Grey, of course, played by uh, uh, Sophie Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones. I don't watch Game of Thrones, sorry, but she's incredible Jean Grey as well, and their scenes uh, contribute a lot to that. And uh, Fassbender, whenever he's interacting with anyone else, it's maybe the best stuff from the film. 
Um, how Fassbender gets back into his role of Magneto is heartbreaking, and there's a call back to his origin that I really enjoyed. Um, this movie is so well done. I mean, the stuff that I just didn't like is really nitpicky. Um, uh, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm sorry. Uh, Lana Condor, I think, is how you say it. Uh, she plays a Jubilee in the movie, and she's barely in it, so that really bummed me out. Uh, I would have rather seen her as a cameo than the way they used her. The thing that really bothered me was Olivia Munn. And Olivia Munn, she's proven to be a hell of an actress, not uh, not just because she's attractive, which, you know, she's not just Kabil, she's actually has some talent. Uh, if you watch the newsroom, she's incredible on there. But uh, they bring her in as Psylocke, and she has nothing to do. If you see that scene where she cuts through the car in the trailer, that's pretty much the extent of what she does. I was pretty disappointed by that, actually. And then uh, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, the way they've, they've gone from Mystique, I just I don't like it. I'm just kind of over Jennifer Lawrence playing her, so, and it feels like she's kind of just, like, sleepwalking through it, like, well, Hunger Games is over, I need to be a part of another franchise. Uh, I, I really just didn't like her. Um, but everyone else, uh, Ty Sheridan, I want to give him credit, who now plays the young Cyclops. Uh, Evan Peters is Quicksilver. Okay, gotta get this out of the way. He, his scene, because of course there's a new Quicksilver scene in here, uh, it's absolutely incredible. It's maybe the best scene in the film. And the way it's handled, and the dynamic between him and Magneto, that's growing. It's it's so well done, but the Quicksilver scene is crazy, and it's better than the one from Days of Future Past. Um, a lot of the critiques I've been reading from critics have been like, not every character gets their due. Uh, you could make that case argument, I guess, but what I felt like is that they gave every character just enough to build on for feature films. Uh, Storm, it's really cool to see her played well and with an accent by uh, Alexandra Ship. Uh, I would have liked a little more to her origin. I That bothered me a little bit, but uh, overall, though, she has to look down. She feels like Storm. She feels like she's going to grow into a great leader as you know, if you've read the comics, you know how integral she becomes to the X-Men. Uh, there is one scene here, uh, just kind of wrap this up, with a uh, with a character that you kind of expect a cameo in here. I really wish they hadn't shown that he was, that this person was going to even be in it. But the scene's incredible, and it's a big callback, and it sets up uh, something later on that I think will be pretty interesting. So... Uh, there's a lot of earth building in this movie, but it doesn't feel like it doesn't even feel like uh, Batman v Superman at times felt, where they're just shoving stuff in for the sake of shoving it in. There's a lot of uh, good fan service here. The direction's done really well. Uh, the the big plot, Apocalypse's overall arching plan that kind of reveals itself in the last third is pretty creepy, and I felt a genuine sense of oh my god, like, oh my god, like, stop this, stop this, so, uh, this movie had me on my, had me on my, on the edge of my seat, I really did enjoy this, it's not, it's still not better than First Class for me, which I'm sure some people will be like, really, I, I love First Class, I just rewatched it the other day, I think it's the best X-Men film they've done, but this is actually better than Days of Future Past for me, I appreciate there's an actual villain, and it's not just about time travel, really. This does such a good job really setting up some big Easter eggs uh, for heading forward in this new universe they're building, and by the way, stay after credits. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you that, but stay after the credits for this, because it, it's pretty integral if you know your, uh, you know your X-Men uh, canon. So, uh, as far as my grade, I'd give this an A-. I thought this was a solid X-Men film. I really enjoyed it. Um, you should definitely give this a shot, give this a, uh, give this a look. Again, it's not Civil War, it's not Deadpool, but for an X-Men film and what they've built up, I thought this was a solid follow-up to uh, Days of Future Past. So, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we will have reviews coming up this week for a pop star, which I'm incredibly excited for, and then Teenage Mutant Ninja, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, which I'm not excited for. So, We'll have both those reviews up for you guys this weekend. Uh, you can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. Uh, 
tweet me your comments, your questions, let I let what you'd like us to review. We'd love to hear that from you guys. You can follow us here on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash real pineapple seven seven five and like us on Facebook at the real pineapple. Alright guys, thank you so much for listening. We will talk to you soon. Take care.